Claude Opus 4.5 is here. Just last week, we got Gemini 3, we got Codex Max, and now, less than a week later, we have a brand new Frontier model from Anthropic. And according to the benchmarks, it is the best model for coding agents and computer use. This is what Anthropic is known for. Let me break it all down for you, including the new features they're launching in their developer platform. So first, let's start with the most important benchmark for coders, Suibench Verified. Here it is, Opus 4.5 at 80.9% as compared to the previous version, Sonnet 4.5, 77.2%. Now these bars look pretty far apart, but just remember it's basically only showing from 70 to 82, which makes it look like Gemini 3 Pro right here is way off of Opus 4.5, but it's not. But it did get a 4% jump. Gemini 3 Pro 76.2, GPT 5.1, Codex Max 77.9, and GPT 5.1 76.3, all compared to the top dog, Opus 4.5 at 80.9%. Now, what I really like that Anthropic did was list the models that literally just came out last week in this blog post. Now, of course they would, I guess, because they have the number one model in this benchmark. But they also listed all the other benchmarks. Let me show you. So here's a Gentic Terminal Coding, Terminal Bench 2.0, 59.3, the number one score. Coming in second, 54.2, Gemini 3 Pro. We have T2 Bench, which tests a Gentic tool use. We have a 98.2 and an 88.9%. And for Gemini 3 Pro, we have an 85.3 and a 98% respectively. We have OS World, which is a computer use benchmark, 66.3. And OpenAI and Google decided not to use this benchmark, or at least not to release it. Now the three benchmarks Opus 4.5 did not score number one in are GPQA Diamond, which tests graduate level reasoning. It's 87% versus Gemini 3 Pro at 91.9%. We have MMMU, which is visual reasoning. GPT 5.1 took the crown on that one, and MMMLU, multilingual Q&A, Gemini 3 took the crown 91.8 versus 90.8 for Opus 4.5. Now they also released the Vending Bench benchmark as well. This tests long-term coherence. This benchmark sets up a virtual vending machine with the most important part being managing the inventory and making sure that it is maximizing for profit. $4,967.06. But if we check over on the Vending Bench 2 website, here is the leaderboard. Gemini 3 Pro, still number one, $5,478.16. So the Opus 4.5 model did not win on this one. And here it is on Arc AGI 1. So Gemini 3 Deep Think still in the lead, 87.5%. Opus 4.5 thinking, 64K, 80%. And of course, here's the human baseline at 98%. So we're still not quite there on Arc AGI 1. And Arc AGI 2, we have Gemini 3 Deep Think, 45.1%. Opus 4.5 thinking, 37.6%. Now, how about price? It says right here, the pricing is now $5 and $25 per million tokens. That is $5 for input and $25 for output. And how does that compare versus Gemini 3 Pro? Well, it is actually a lot more expensive. So for Gemini 3 Pro, we have $2 and $12 for input and output for prompts that are under 200,000 tokens and $4 and $18 for prompts that are above 200,000 tokens. So that is between 50 and 100% more expensive than Gemini 3 Pro, which just came out last week. Now. Here is an incredible statistic. When Anthropic is looking to hire performance engineers onto the Anthropic team, they give them a notoriously difficult take-home exam. And they also gave that exact take-home exam to Opus 4.5, and Opus 4.5 did better than any single candidate that Anthropic has ever hired. That's insane to think about. And there is a time pressure to it as well. Two hours is the limit. For all of the incredible engineers that Anthropic has hired, Opus 4.5 has done better. And if you love coding models, you will love the sponsor of today's video, Warp. 
AI coding is changing quickly. People were using IDEs, now they're using CLI-based workflows, but you may not have heard of Warp yet, and I'm excited to tell you about them. Warp is a leading AI coding agent, topping benchmarks like Terminal Bench, which tests its ability to use the terminal. They ranked number one ahead of Claude Code and Gemini CLI, and they scored top five on Bench Verified. With Warp, you get just the parts of the IDE that you actually need. Edit files in app, review code diffs, and ship production ready code. And it is designed for multi-agent control. You can manage and dispatch agents in parallel easily, all from a modern UX. Warp supports code base indexing, MCP and rule support, all the modern LLMs that you want to try. So check them out. Let me know what you think. All the links down below. Now back to the video. And apparently the Opus 4.5 model is actually so good at logic and reasoning, it actually outpaced what the benchmark is capable of testing. Listen to this. A common benchmark for agentic capabilities is T2 Bench, which measures the performance of agents in real-world multi-turn tasks. In one scenario, models have to act as an airline service agent helping with a distressed customer. The benchmark expects models to refuse a modification to a basic economy booking since the airline doesn't allow for that change. Instead, Opus 4.5 found an insightful and legitimate way to solve the problem, upgrade the cabin first, then modify the flights. Now, whether it should have upgraded the cabin is up for discussion, and maybe we should ask the T2 Bench benchmark authors if that is the actual optimal outcome for that situation. But nonetheless, the benchmark failed that answer because the benchmark expects the model to refuse the modification because modifications of economy class seats is not allowed. Anthropic is also releasing something called advanced tool use. So what has been happening with the proliferation of MCP servers is essentially the server comes with the name of its set of tools, descriptions of how to use it, and all of this gets put into the context window of a model and uses up a lot of that context window before the user's prompt is even written. And so Anthropic's solution is to create the ability for the model to search an infinite number of tools. So it doesn't have to remember which tools are where, it simply searches, and then it only gets the tool that it needs when it needs it. So here are the three features. One, a tool search tool, which allows Claude to use search tools to access thousands of tools without consuming its context window. Very meta, but basically using a tool to search for other tools. It also has programmatic tool calling allows Claude to invoke tools in a code execution environment, reducing the impact on the model's context window. And then last, tool use examples, which provides a universal standard for demonstrating how to effectively use a given tool. And so why is that so important? Let me show you the example they provide. So these are MCP tool definitions. Now for GitHub's MCP server, they have 35 tools, which immediately when loaded uses 26 thousand tokens in the context window. Those are 26,000 tokens that cannot be used for something else more important. Slack, 11 tools, 21,000 tokens. Sentry, five tools, 3,000. Grafana and Splunk. And just imagine all of the other MCP servers that you're using immediately taking up parts of your context window. Now you don't have to do that. You simply ask the search tool to go find the right tool for the job, and then it only returns exactly what the model needs for that tool. So here's what that looks like, loading up a bunch of different tools into the context window using the traditional approach, using about 40% of the context window just for MCP tool definitions. Now we can use tool search tool and only 5% of the context window gets used up for tool definitions. So that is a massive, massive reduction in context window usage before you even get to the part that's custom to your business. And Opus 4.5 is also much more efficient than Sonnet 4.5. So again, here's Suibench verified. And as we see here, to get an accuracy of about 76%, all the way out here, it took about 22,000 tokens for Sonnet 4.5, however, Look here, for Opus 4.5 on high thinking, we get above 80%, but we only use about 12,000 tokens. That is about half as many tokens, but we also increase performance. Efficiency is 
key. I've been talking about that so much lately. It's not just how long a model can think for. It's not just how long an agent can run autonomously, but it's what it does with that time. That's just as important. What is the intelligence per token. And let me just show you what a few people who had early access to Opus 4.5 have been saying. Here's Dan Shipper, CEO of every Opus 4.5 launch today, best coding model I've ever used, and it's not close, we're never going back. Ethan Mollick, I had early access to Opus 4.5, and it is a very impressive model that seems to be right at the frontier. Big gains in ability to do practical work, like make a PowerPoint from an Excel, and the best results ever and in one shot in my LEM poetry test, plus good results in Claude code. So if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.